All right, we're on page one of note seven of Calc C. We're talking about uh, testing series for convergence or divergence. And uh, in this set of notes, we're gonna talk about the ratio test, which is by far my favorite test to use. And also the root test, which is like its sibling, which is like a stronger test, but I don't like to use it as much because I don't like to take uh, limits of nth roots quite so much. Um, so. Working with uh, the ratio test, and like we don't really know anything about it yet, but trust me on this, you need to be good at simplifying things that have um, factorials in them. So what we're gonna do on this page is just kind of like go through, simplify some factorials, see how it works, make sure we're, we're all familiar with like uh, what distributes, how to peel things off. So let's, let's get to it and see what we can do. So uh, for me, the first step on this one, I think would be to expand the numerator, get 2n plus 2, and then we're going to do factorial of that. And then here it's the quantity 2n factorial. There's a difference between 2 times n factorial and, and the quantity 2n factorial, and you really have to pay attention with your parentheses. So now what we do is from the numerator, I'm going to peel off uh, 2n plus 2, because 2n plus 2 factorial is 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n, just 2n, uh, times 2n minus 1, and so on, right? So what we could do is we could say 2n plus 2 factorial is 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 factorial. Or we could keep going, we can peel off a 2n plus 1, and then what's left? It's 2n, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2, and so on. That's just the quantity 2n factorial. And this is what we wanted. So when you're dealing with these, you look for things that cancel. So once we get to here, we can cancel this. So this whole thing actually is just 2n plus 2 and 2n plus 1. And it simplifies. So you have to get really good at that because using the ratio test, um, you typically use it on things that involve factorials. And once you've, you've gotten going, like now you have to simplify a lot of factorials. So let's look at this one. So which of these is bigger? Because that's the one you usually want to peel off from. So this is n factorial. It's n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on. This one's already n minus 2 factorial. So this is actually bigger. So that's where we're going to peel off of. So it's going to be n. And then I'll peel off an n minus 1. And then what's left? Just n minus 2 and everything after it, which is n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2 factorial. Once you get this, you can cancel those. So this is n n minus one. So like, just uh, don't be intimidated by them basically. And watch out for the parentheses. Like here, what's really happening? It's not the quantity two times n plus three factorial. It's two times n plus three factorial. So you would find n plus three factorial multiplied by two. It's not that every single term is getting multiplied by two. There's just one, two. And then the same sort of argument in the denominator. So this, I'm going to just say this is two thirds. And then which one's bigger? So n plus three is definitely bigger than n minus one. So n plus three factorial is bigger. So we'll peel off from there. So n plus three. And then n plus two. And then n plus one. This is terrible. And then n. <laughs> And then what's left is n minus one factorial. So you just peel it off until you get to the other factorial, basically. n minus one factorial. And then these are gonna cancel for us. And so we are left with 2 thirds of n plus three, n plus two, n plus one, and n. Whew. So there's a lot left over. But uh, the key thing is we got rid of the factorials. Factorials are a little harder to deal with than other things, so you want to kind of do that. So now here, what's happening? We have um, n factorial, and then we're squaring it. So that's like n squared, n minus 1 squared, n minus 2 squared, n minus 3, and so on. And then down here, we have n minus 1 factorial, but then squared. So we have n minus one squared, n minus two squared, n minus three squared. So we want to watch out for that. So when I expand this, I'm going to write it that way. I'm going to say that this is uh, n squared. And then what's left after n squared? You have n minus one squared, n minus two squared, n minus three. It's really n minus one factorial squared. So this one actually, despite initial appearances, uh, simplifies really quickly to just 
n squared. So how else could you do that? Um, another way of looking at it, they're both squared. So you can bring them under the same thing and say it's n factorial, n minus one factorial, and then squared. And then this would be n, n minus one factorial over n minus one factorial and then squared, which just gives you n squared. So either way, it doesn't make a difference how you approach it. Uh, all right, so this one's gonna be a little different because uh, there's like other stuff. There's, there's not just factorials. Uh, does this have a particular form? I would say that it does. I don't know how important it is right now, but it looks to me like, uh, like here we have three to the n plus two, three to the n plus one. Two, x to the two n plus three, x to the two n plus one, and then uh, maybe the telltale thing is, this is 2n plus 1 factorial. This is uh, 2, the quantity n plus 1 plus 1. That's like a weird way of writing it. It looks to me like maybe what's happening here is we have like some nth term, ooh, some nth term, which I think is actually 3 to the n plus 1, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And I think what we're doing is that this thing is actually uh, a sub n plus one, like every n in here was replaced with n plus one. So n plus one plus one is n plus two. Two times the quantity n plus one plus one is two n plus two plus one is two n plus three. Uh, and then here it's a little more explicit, like two the quantity n plus one plus one is exactly what's here. I think we have the n plus first term and then divided by the nth term, which is why this is the reciprocal of this. So it's the n plus first term times one over the nth term. I think that's what's happening there. I think that because one, I wrote the problem and two, it's a really common thing to happen when you're talking about the ratio test. So like I'm doing this problem as if I already kind of know where it's going. Uh, whereas you probably are not doing that. Uh, all right, how do we simplify this? Well, three to the n plus two over three to the n plus one just leaves you with three. And then x to the 2n plus 3, x to the 2n plus 1. So you subtract the exponents because you're dividing. So that's x to the uh, second, right? So 2n plus 3 minus the quantity 2n plus 1. The 2n's are gone. 3 minus 1 is 2. And then uh, this is, if we were to simplify this, we get 2n plus 3, right? So I'm going to say this is still 2n plus 1 factorial. And then I'll make this uh, 2n plus 3 factorial. And we'll keep going from there. So equals 3x squared, 2n plus 1 factorial is the smaller one. So we peel off, oh boy, peel off here, 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2, and then finally 2n plus 1 factorial. And we are able to cancel, cancel. And so this becomes 3x squared over 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2. All right, I mean, not bad, but uh, harder, right? Because we had x's, we had other things, but like still, it's, it's not bad. And it's all about fact, uh, properties of exponents and simplifying factorials. And, and the more you understand those, the easier it will be. This, I think, is probably a really similar situation. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, I would say, I think the nth term is the reciprocal of this. So I think that a sub n is actually negative one to the n, x to the two n minus three over four n plus two, four to the n plus two. Then I think this is a sub n plus one. So, I mean, I'll write that. It's not, it's not super uh, important for what we're doing right now, but n, x to the, I mean, you want to find patterns in the things that you're doing. Series are like all about patterns and, and pattern recognition. So I think this is what we have. And we're doing a sub n plus ew, a sub n plus one times one over a sub n. I think that's what this is. And you can like check and see. Um, so here, if we start simplifying, we have negative one to the n plus one over negative one to the n. You subtract the exponent, you just get negative one. I'm gonna put in parentheses, doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, x to the 2n minus 1 over x to the 2n minus 3. So you have 2n minus 1 minus the quantity. Let me write it on the side here. 
I don't know that this would trip anybody up, but it might. So 2n minus 1 minus the quantity 2n minus 3. The 2n's are gone. You have negative 1 plus 3. So you end up with x squared um, in the top, in the numerator. So I don't know if you were expecting that or not. There's no, there's no factorial here. That's kind of interesting. Uh, and then just over 4. That's it. No factorials. That's weird-ish. Um, so we end up with this. And that's fine, because that's what it asks us to do. So uh, simplifying factorials is a big deal. And then down here, we essentially have this situation where we're given a sub n and we're asked to find a something else, right? So n plus 3, sure, why not? So what you're going to do, every n you see becomes n plus 3. So this will be x to the 3 times n plus 3 is 3n plus 9. So 3n plus 9 minus 2 is plus 7. 5 to the n plus 3, n plus 4 factorial. And that's it. There's nothing, there's nothing more to do with this. Every n we see becomes n minus 1. So a negative 1 to the n minus 1. OK, so we'll have 3 to the, the n becomes n minus 1 minus 1. So n minus 2, x to the n minus 1 over n minus 3 factorial. Right, n minus 1 minus 2 is n minus 3. Nothing more to do. Every n you see becomes n plus 1. So this is 3 to the n plus 1 minus 2 is n minus 1. x to the 2n plus 2 plus 1, so 2n plus 3. 5 to the 2n plus 2 minus 3 is 2n minus 1. OK. This one, by the way, this is like, uh, you do this one a lot. This, this is the big one. Finding a sub n plus 1 is like the, the number one thing that you do. Oh, we're going to do it here too. The number one thing that you do is find a sub n plus 1. So this one, uh, there's two ways you can do it. I mean, you can, this is like the cheap way. And there's nothing wrong with it. But what I prefer to do, I prefer to rewrite everything kind of as its own base to its own power. So I'm going to rewrite this. And this just makes your life easier in the long run. And that's why I do it n plus 1, x to the x cubed to the n plus 1. So you multiply the exponents, x to the 3n plus 3 over 5 to the n plus 1. OK, so I do that because I like to have every base to its own exponent. So when we are faced with something like these problems where we have to simplify, it's really clear. Like each base with its own exponent, you just find them, simplify them, work with that. All right, this was all preliminary stuff. I will be back in the next video, and we're going to actually start talking about these tests. So I will see you there.